How y'all doing? Well, I had like a soul-crushing experience with the XR400 this week. But it uh, seemed like it'd be a, a good topic. It'd be some lessons learned that I could share with y'all. First of all, this ain't the XR400. Every time I get on this bike, everybody, uh, not everybody, but lots of people send me messages saying, hey, I see you got the XR400 going and dirt bike diet must be over. No, no, none of that's true. This is the XR250R. It ain't the XR400. You'll, you'll know when I'm on the XR400 because the uh, front fender won't be red and uh, every time I, I crack the throttle, I'll giggle like a little schoolgirl. So this is the XR250R. Um, can't ride the XR400 yet. A, because because uh, I, ha I got eight more pounds to lose on the dirt bike diet. And B, uh, because I can't get a plate for it. And uh, that's what uh, we're gonna talk about today. So I've been working hard on the XR400 trying to get it ready for uh, the inspection for it to be street legal. And uh, you know, if y'all are wondering about that, I got a video out there about uh, how to make a dirt bike street legal in Colorado. And uh, I was going through that process and uh, I finally got it where everything was tip top and ready to go inspected and I was ready to get a license plate for it. And, and I went in a past inspection, past inspection, that went all right. And then after inspection, I, uh, I went straight to the DMV to get the license plates. And I was, I was so excited. I was, I was really focused on that inspection where that was going to be the problem. And then I, I went in to get the license plates and I gave them all my paperwork. And they're like, oh yeah, you can't, you can't register this to be street legal. And I was like, yes, I can. I, I do this all the time. I got all my paperwork. Everything's there. I can register it to be street legal. And they said, no, you can't. It's already registered to be street legal under somebody else's name. I was like, oh. Well, would it be under the name of the, this person right here on my bill of sale who sold it to me? And they said, no, it's somebody else. And I said, well, crap. So instead of walking out of the uh, DMV with license plates, I walked out with a pile of paperwork that I got to do if I want to get license plates. So let's talk about what a mess that is. So here's the deal. I, I got a bill of sale that says I bought it and uh, that somebody else sold it. But as according to the state, the bike's registered to somebody else entirely. So what we need to do is we need to prove that nobody stole the bike from that person. Or at the very least, if somebody st st did steal the bike from that person or somebody in between that person and me, that uh, you know we'll, we'll make good on making everything right and making everybody whole again if somebody should come and make a claim. So it's called getting a bonded title. That's, that's the process is you have to get a bonded title. And, so, first thing I did is I came home and uh, I looked up online. You can look up for free online if a vehicle's been stolen. You can put the VIN in and if the vehicle's been reported stolen, you can find out right there. So, one lesson learned right there is if you're buying a bike and there's no title, before you buy the bike, pop the VIN in to the uh, national database. I'll put a link in the description so you guys can go straight to the site and do that. Pop the VIN in there and uh, see if it's been reported stolen. Because if it's reported stolen, don't buy the bike. Um, if I would have found uh, this week that this bike was reported stolen, then uh, I, I'd be screwed. So, uh, yeah. So a bike wasn't stolen, okay, cool. So next step in the process is uh, you have to find out who the bike is registered to. Now the person at the DMV, they were looking right at their name, but they can't show it to me. Uh, it has to be all official. So you have to go to the uh, Department of Revenue, at least in the state of Colorado. You go to the Department of Revenue and you, you pay $2.20 to do a record search. And uh, you gotta like sign all this paperwork, say, no, 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 I own the bike. I have a legitimate reason for looking this information up. I'm not a creeper. And, uh, and then they pull the record for you. And then I find out the name and the address of the person who, uh, who the bike is registered to. So then the next step in the process is I need to contact that person and I need to prove that I contacted that person to, uh, to try to make sure that they no longer have an interest, is how they say it, in the motorcycle. And all I really got to do is I got to go back to register with a uh, certified letter stub that shows that I tried to send this person a letter. So I sent that off to them and now I'm waiting for them to either re reply to me, uh, I gave them all my contact information, or for them to not reply to me, which means in like, I guess about 20 days, the post office uh, sends me a notification that uh, they didn't pick up the letter. Um, or I, I got my stub that says, okay, that they did pick up the letter, uh, they just didn't reply to me. But either way, in like 20 days, I can go back to the DMV with, uh, with uh, some kind of proof that this person is either no longer interested in this motorcycle or I did everything I could to contact them and I could. 
But that's not all you need. You need a couple other things. So one, you gotta have a uh, you gotta have a bond. You have to purchase a bond for twice the value of the motorcycle. Yeah, I know. Now it's just getting stupid, ain't it? So now when you buy a bond, you don't pay for the whole amount of the bond. You pay for a fraction of it, right? So you know what you gotta do is you gotta get the motorcycle appraised. Now some people have told me that I gotta go to a, like a motorcycle dealership and get the motorcycle appraised. Other people, other people at DMV have told me that I just need to uh, get on the Kelly Blue Book and um, you know get the value off of there and just print it off and bring it into them. We'll see. But I looked it up and the uh, Blue Book value of the XR400 is about uh, $1,750. So I'm going to get a bond for $4,000, which will probably cost me like 50 bucks. Nope, nope. Fool me once, shame on you. All right, so so you get to, to the DMV and you got all your stuff that you would have if you were making a bike street legal that wasn't already registered, which is you know your van inspection, your uh, certificate of equipment compliance, your uh, what else you got? You got your bill of sale, uh, your driver's license, insurance, all that stuff. And then on top of that, you got your proof that you tried to contact who it was registered to. You got your bond for twice the value of the motorcycle. You got your uh, your proof of what the value of the motorcycle is. And uh, and then then you can go ahead and you can apply for a bonded title, which isn't the same as a regular clean title. Uh, so what happens is they'll, they'll they'll build your title, your bonded title and then they'll send you back your bonded title and then you can go get your license plates after all that um but then this bonded title it says like bonded title on it it looks like a regular title otherwise but uh what that means is um you gotta wait three years to get a regular title so if nobody steps up and makes a claim for uh three years then they uh then they send you a regular normal clean title so so really you probably don't want to sell the motorcycle for three years with the bonded title so that's that's a, which i don't mind that but still that's just kind of all the big pain in the butt you got to go through just because somebody decided not to transfer the registration 10 years ago so there, there's another lesson learned if y'all ever sell a motorcycle and you got a title Please transfer the title, even if you're not making it street legal, transfer the title, and if you're the person getting the title transferred to, the person buying the motorcycle, go ahead and register it with the state. It'll make it easier on everybody down the road. And, and don't forget, if you ever do get a motorcycle stolen, make sure you get it registered in that database. Make sure that uh, it can be looked up as a stolen vehicle, because uh, it greatly increases your chances of getting that bike back, and uh, makes things easier down the road for anybody who might accidentally buy that stolen motorcycle. All right, so that, that's my sad story. Um, you know, you know, subscribe, you know, keep up the channel, and um, I'll fill you in on what happens later on. And uh, hopefully it works out for the best. All right, y'all have a good week. Over and out. Thanks for watching the video. Be sure to like, subscribe, and share. Those actions go a long way to helping me out and to encouraging me to make more videos. Links are in the description for how you can find me on Facebook, Twitter, and other sites and apps. Y'all have a good week. Over and out.